Side hip, for example, my upper body is making a contract, move myself into position, moving through this motion. How to get higher kicks. We need to improve a few different areas in order to improve our kicks. It's not just simply getting more flexible. You know, people tend to think if I can do the splits, then I can do higher kicks. Um, often the case, but it's not, it's not everything. So, when we do the splits, or stretching, or static stretching, you know, when we're doing a static stretching, we're holding a position, this kind of thing, and we're just holding on to certain, certain stretches for a, a static, you know, extended period of time. This is improving our passive range of motion, okay? So a, a range of motion in a still position. This is gonna help, but it's gonna be slightly less important than the next, next one I'm gonna talk about, and that is active range of motion. This is the one we really need to improve to improve our kicking mobility. Okay, so what active range of motion means is the range of motion that I can actively move through. So if I'm talking about how high I can lift my knee to the front, for example, you know, this would be what kind of my active range of motion. The motion I can actually pull my leg up to is active range of motion. Yeah, my passive range is slightly higher. I can pull it up higher. But what I can actually do actively with my own muscles or my own strength is my, is my active range of motion. And this is more important for improving our kicks than passive range of motion. So how can we improve our active range of motion? Through mobility exercises, okay? So not so much the traditional um, stretching that you'd see normally in, a, in an, a traditional karate dojo, where you do a little warm up and some static stretching. We wanna be doing movements where we're taking our, our joints and our limbs through a range of motion. Um, with using the musculature of the body. So for example, like a, a very basic version of that then could be this kind of thing, where I'm starting from here and I'm bringing my knee up, under control the whole time, and bringing it around. And then back in and down, this kind of work. This is actually improving my active range of motion because I'm, I'm controlling the limb through that, that movement. Um, we can also do things like uh, kind of leg swims where we're gonna be dynamically moving through. Dynamically through, moving through this motion, using a little bit more momentum to take it a little bit further. We can also use movements like a, uh, almost like a Romanian deadlift kind of position. So from here I can cross my arms and I can send my hips back, so I'm lengthening the hamstrings through the movement, through the movement, and then drawing back up again. So I'm lengthening the hamstrings through the motion, and then drawing back up, using the hamstrings to make that action, to make that movement. Um, kicking is obviously an active movement, you know, we're using the muscles to deliver the kick, so we can't be relying on this passive flexibility where I'm holding myself in a position. I need to be able to move myself into positions with my own, uh, you know, my own force, my own musculature. In the short term, we can improve our, our range of motion uh, quickly, and I mean in minutes, by doing static stretching, static stretching. Um, because what what creates that kind of tightness or stops you from going further is the central nervous system. Uh, that stretch reflex. Your body's trying to protect yourself. So when you're going into a stretch, the muscle will stop you from going any further. And we need to kind of deaden that reflex or deaden that sensation by allowing the muscle to relax in that position. So I could be down here, for example, just breathing into that, you know, nice, nice deep breaths and just relaxing. Letting the muscle know that it's okay to be there at that length. After this, the muscle then have a little bit more range of motion before that kicks in, that, uh, that reflex kicks in, which will allow us to extend the leg a little further maybe. Um, this is obviously on the short term, but if we do this over the long term and allow the muscle to get used to that, we're gonna see an improvement in our flexibility this way. The next area is to think about our core or our, our abdomen. The strength of our, our waist is important, or our lower back, our waist, our abdominals, because that is involved heavily in kicking. You know, when I'm doing a side kick, for example, my upper body is making a contraction this way with the obliques and stuff. So I must have a strong core in order to lift my leg up this way because the leg is being lifted not only by the hip flexors, but by the abdomen as well. So having a strong musculature in the, in the, in the abdomen and around the body is going to help us with our kicks as well because all the time our legs be lifted up by our body as well. So there's just a few ideas to think about when you're trying to improve your height of your kicks. It's not simply getting into the splits. You know, the splits are, are not as important as you think. You know, a lot of the questions I get is how can I do the splits? You don't need to do the splits to kick well. You know, the splits and kicking are different skills, completely different skills. Obviously the splits will have a nice carryover, but it's not essential. 
you can kick exceptionally well without ever being able to do the splits. Um, a lot of it's genetic as well, the structure of your hip joints and your pelvis and the way that the, the bones sit inside the joint can prevent you from ever doing the splits anyway. So it's not about necessarily um, always getting into that split position. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe if you haven't done already and share it with your friends and I'll see you next time.